to implement these changes. That's what we're going to see with that. That's what Obama's plan is. It's corporate fascism, it's crony capitalism, it's paying off his big donors and the big banks to create Agenda 21 type of projects. This is, if you look at their own writings, they claim that it's going to have more jobs, better transit, climate response. Come 2060, a larger share of Southeast Florida residents will live in walkable districts linked to railroads, trolleys, bike rentals, and other transport options. Yes, that's what Obama's plan for 21st century transportation is about, is simply Agenda 21. And he's doing it without the Congress. He's creating a $300 billion expenditure that is not originating in the House, as the Constitution says. He's going to do it, and he's going to have the grants, the Tiger grants, that he's going to allocate to his buddies. And he's selling it as a way to fix our decaying infrastructure. He's going to tell you that he's rebuilding the roads and the collapsing bridges. Now, one more look at his fact sheet, because he says this isn't an imperial presidency. But reading from his fact sheet, he says he wants to institutionalize best practices and insights from the president's previous executive orders and presidential memorandums. See, when Obama says that this is not about an imperial presidency, it's all about his, he knows he's got executive orders buried in there. When he says it's not about a socialism, he knows that he's laying out a plan for Agenda 21, and that's precisely what this is. Now, finally today, one of the reasons that the colonists declared their independence from and seceded from the British Empire was because it was at a constant state of war, just like all the nations of Europe at that time. And I guess the questions we need to ask are, has America become an empire that is constantly at war? Certainly that is the case since World War II. And now we see on InfoWars a very detailed article attacking the idea that this broken windows is a way to increase the economy, to make people wealthy. Another idiot economist says that we need a major war to save the economy. And this is uh, from George Washington's blog. I'm not gonna go over the details of this article because just to print it out, it's about 15 pages long, but it's a very detailed refutation of what economists call the broken window fallacy. The idea that something like a hurricane is good for the economy or a war is good for the economy. I just recently saw Jersey Boys, and it was interesting at the very beginning, this kid who talked about his childhood and how he was corrupted and got into the mob and got into crime, his job was to go around and break windows so they could sell new windows. It didn't benefit anybody but the guy who was breaking the windows and selling the new windows. It didn't help the restaurants or the other businesses. It didn't help a restaurant to get more salaries or wages for themselves or their employees. It didn't help them to provide better services, better quality food at a lower price so they can compete better, so they could offer better services to people. No, it simply helped the person who was breaking the window. And just like organized crime, that's the way the military industrial complex works. The argument that war benefits the economy is the same argument. It only benefits those who are creating the war. But unlike this guy who was breaking windows, they're killing people in massive amounts, and that makes it even worse. And we also learned today that the Pentagon reveals that it's had a secret military presence in Somalia since 2007. They're just now admitting that they've been there constantly. Someone has leaked that they have 120 people that have been staying on the ground throughout in Somalia. Yet another example of how we have a foot in every war and how the military industrial complex runs this country. But how do they treat the soldiers who fight for this government that is constantly at war with everyone? Look at this article about the VA. VA workers rip crucifix off a dying vet's neck, deal crack, rape, and many more. Now this is an audit report and it was pulled out. There were highlighted uh, sections of that from U.S. Senator Tom Coburn, Republican of Oklahoma. More than 1,000 veterans may have died at the hands of the Department of Veterans Affair, even as the agency was beset with shocking instances of employee misconduct. They talk about all these things that I mentioned in the headlines, plus they had this revelation. They said a nurse working at the VA hospital in Kentucky pled guilty to involuntary manslaughter after being charged with killing a World War II vet. A 90-year-old veteran died from a lethal, lethal dose of morphine, and according to the report, at least two other veterans cared for by the same nurse died under the same suspicious circumstances. What was the punishment for this nurse? 
she was sentenced to time served of eight days, eight days. She's engaged in, it looks like she's engaged in euthanasia and mercy killings of 90 year olds. It's horrific the way we treat the veterans in this country. We need to treat them at least as well as we do the illegal aliens that are flooding into our country as the government opens the borders and takes down our homeland in the name of Homeland Security. We're gonna be right back after the break. We've got an interview with someone who does take the, his rights seriously, who has stood up for them and who got arrested for it. 21-year-old Danny Martins has vigorously been standing up for his right to address his grievances to protest. And what did he get for it? Well, he just recently got arrested. We're gonna be talking to him right after the break. Stay with us. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Last week, I talked to a Border Patrol Union rep in El Paso, Texas, who tried to contact the CDC, and he said that, hey, we've got these diseases coming across the border. Could you help us out or at least give us some kind of direction, some information on what it is we can do? And they pretty much said that that's not their job. So right now, we have Border Patrol agents who are just EMTs screening these kids coming across for diseases, and they don't really have the training to deal with that. So when I got back here to Austin, I decided to call the CDC myself and ask them a few questions. You know, I got on and I spoke to a lady that worked for him and I said, you know, why aren't you down here? Don't you think this is important? And at what point do you step in and do your job? She, you know, rattled off some mumbo jumbo thing that's been typed up for her to say already and basically didn't give me anything like that. So once that video was put out, it made it on Drudge and a lot of people have ended up calling the CDC themselves with concern saying, hey, you need to take this into consideration. This is a very big problem. You know, we have swine flu that's made it all the way up to uh, San Antonio to Lackland Air Force Base. We have possible cases of HIV coming across our borders from the people in Honduras. So now they have activated their emergency operations center. But the thing is though, they're being very silent about it. They're not making it very public that they've done that. And instead of them doing their job, which is help inform the doctors, the law enforcement, the border patrol across the border, they're keeping it to themselves. 
You know, there's reports right now that in El Paso, there is a decontamination center set up right now, much like one that you would find in West Africa. You know, why aren't they informing the doctors and the Border Patrol and the police across the border about these diseases? Why are they keeping them secret? They know something's up, but they're not telling us. They have a decontamination center. They have this emergency operations center set up, but they're keeping the public uninformed. So the question is, is what are they hiding? What do they know about? And why aren't they telling the public more about it? So what you need to do is get on your phone, call the CDC and demand answers like I've done. Maybe we can figure out what's going on and what's coming across our borders. Alex Jones here to break down some exciting developments in the area of research concerning supplemental iodine. It's nothing less than phenomenal. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. And I used some of the mainline iodine supplements and they upset my stomach and I had some issues with it. Until I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group, who I was already interviewing as an expert on my radio show, and I began taking the product before he actually rolled it out. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals that are incredibly powerful that no one else has as a source for their iodine from between seven and 12,000 feet, literally drilled out of the ground. You put it on a hot plate, and it turns into the pure gas. No one else has 99.99% pure iodine. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. I was over 270 pounds. And with the iodine exercise and better diet, I have lost now more than 50 pounds total and I'm continuing to lose the weight. I have more energy, my libido, all this crap came out of my skin. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, this is trailblazing, and the best part is it helps fund Infowars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at Infowarslife.com. Welcome back. Now, tomorrow is the 4th of July. And the anniversary, of course, of the Declaration of Independence, that was fundamentally about our rights and how government was there to secure those rights. And so we always tie the 4th of July together with the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights doesn't give us our rights. Those come from our Creator. They're there to secure those rights, to make sure that government doesn't take them away. Now, the very first one of our rights enumerated is free speech, the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. We've got a 20-year-old man tonight who has been doing that in New York since September of 2013. And of course, they had nothing to say about it until just recently. And as we've seen this happen over and over again, it's the selective enforcement the censorship of free speech that they don't agree with. And that's exactly what we see in this story. Joining us now is Danny Martins from New York, Suffolk County. Thanks for joining us, Danny. Tell us about your story. Tell us what happened. The article, of course, and the video are up on Infowars.com, but uh, go through it briefly with the audience here. Um, I have been doing this uh, impeach Obama protest over the Long Island Expressway. It was a pedestrian overpass. I've been doing it since September 2013, so I've been doing it for almost a year, excluding wow. the the winterum in mm -hmm. New York because it gets cold and snowy. It's just like unbearable to be up there. But I've been doing it like every week, every Friday, two hours a day for like six or seven months straight with uh, no incident. And then the police came and they said, you know what, we have a safety concern that we feel as if you're causing a distraction. And I said, well, there's billboards. There's politician signs, re-election campaign signs. You have billboards just directing people on the highway. So I didn't understand their concern. And I told them if they were so worried about 
the people on the roads concerned, they have two jobs. They have the job to worry about public safety and as well protect my rights. If they were really concerned about the public safety, they could have had an officer sitting with his lights on, slowing down traffic as I peacefully protested. But uh, they- Well, it's not even that, is it?